after church, I invite you to go look on my Facebook page because I was trying to figure out what I could wear that was red. I don't really have any red shirts, but I have a red tie. But I also remembered, I said, hey, I've got some bright red Georgia socks that I can throw on. So I've got those on now. You can't see them. But go on Facebook afterwards. You can see uh, that I put them there. And I also said, I said, go dogs and go Holy Spirit. What else do you need? I mean, that's, that's really it. So I'm sorry if you're not a Georgia fan. I apologize about that today. We are continuing our sermon series through the book of Hebrews called Grace and Gratitude today, and the title of today's sermon is Leaving Sin Behind. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been scared to go deeper in your life? I can think about some of those times in my own life, but what usually ends up being the case is that going deeper actually leads me into something better, right? Right? I remember learning how to swim as a kid, taking those swimming lessons and all of that stuff. And let me tell you, I enjoyed the shallow end part of the pool. I mean, I thought I had a pretty good handle on that. The bottom of the pool wasn't too far away. The steps were nearby. Everything just felt a little safer in the shallow end. But then comes that time when you have to graduate to to going towards the deep end. And that was kind of scary to me. But then I found out that the deep end was even better. Because there was more space, more room to really swim. Your, your rings could go all the way down to the bottom, and you could swim all the way down there and pick them up, which was really cool to do. It turns out that, that going deeper can actually be a good thing. I, I think about learning how to drive and how nerve-wracking that was. My mom spent the entire time climbing the side of the car looking for that handlebar to hold on to for dear life and She still does that today when I'm driving. And I don't know why. I'm a pretty good driver. But then I finally turned 16, and I got to drive around town, and there was that freedom that comes along with that. But then I had to go deeper, and I had to take that first trip out of town. I had to go on my own to a different city. Uh, For me, it was driving from Swainsboro to Statesboro. It was about a 40-minute drive. But, But once I did it, I'm glad that I went deeper because Statesboro was the place to be. They had all the cool restaurants and the mall and the movie theater, all that great stuff. It turns out that going deeper is a good thing. Finally, I remember being in college And I think back to those first two years where you're taking those generic classes that kind of everybody has to take, and I really wasn't having any fun at all. I didn't really know what I wanted to do yet, uh, what I wanted to study. I didn't know what my major was going to be. It was scary trying to to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my life. But then I took a religion class, and that led me to the point where I am now in life. So I'd say that worked out pretty well for me. That became my major. It turns out that that going deeper is a good thing. Now, I want you to know this applies to the life of faith as well. God wants us to go deeper. We were meant to go deeper. We were meant to grow in our faith. We were meant to move closer and closer to who God wants us to be in Christ Jesus. I invite you to listen to our scripture passage this morning. This comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. Take care, brothers and sisters, that none of you may have an evil, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partners of Christ. If only we hold our first confidence firm to the end. As it is said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. This is the word of God for we the people of God. And we say together, thanks be to God. So just like those scenarios that I mentioned earlier, those situations in your own life, it turns out that going deeper can actually be a good thing. And that's true in the life of faith as well. That's not something to be scared of. That's not something to be frightened by. It's something that we should embrace. We actually want to go deeper and deeper into following God and becoming the people that we were made to be. And the way that we do that is by leaving sin behind. We put it in the rear view. We take off and we don't go back to it. We never return because we're heading to something much better. Here's our bottom line for this morning. Leaving
leaving sin behind will lead you deeper into the life of God. Leaving sin behind will lead you deeper into the life of God. Now, the preacher here in Hebrews is offering us a word of warning. And you only offer a word of warning if you love someone or if you want what is best for someone. Uh, well, what are some ways that we warn other people today? We flash our lights at oncoming traffic if there's a cop up ahead and they don't want to get caught. We rate and review restaurants on Yelp or some places online where you can know how good the food is or how good the service is at a place. Uh, there are movie reviews online, movie reviews that say, do not go see this movie. This is a really bad movie. You've been warned. Have you ever seen any of those bad movies where you didn't listen and you say, yeah, that was pretty bad. I should have listened to that one. Uh, one of my favorite movie reviewers when I was growing up was a guy named Roger Ebert. And he wrote a book compiling all of his reviews of really bad movies. And he titled it, I Hated, Hated, Hated This Movie. Y'all ever seen those kind of films before? Reviews. Or what about those reviews that we read in consumer reports where you can read about new cars or new technology and, and see what's good, see what's not good? Or maybe word of mouth when it comes to a doctor or a dentist office. We can all get a word of warning from somebody else. Now, the preacher is writing to a group of Christians that he feels are in danger. And what are they in danger from? Falling away from their faith. Falling away from Christ. You see, they were living in a time where there had been some, some real physical persecution. But most of that was over now. Now there was that more subtle form of persecution. You know, the one where your neighbors start to talk about you behind your back, or your business begins to be rejected, or those circles that you used to run in in society start to get closed off. The church was starting to face that. And people were finding it a whole lot easier just to let their faith fall by the wayside rather than losing their standing in society. And this wasn't some big, wicked decision that they made, that they didn't go stand on the street corner and say, I renounce Jesus today. I am no longer a Christian. No, it was more a matter of those, those small choices, those small actions, those small decisions to elevate other things above Christ. Do you think that's something that we're all capable of today? Absolutely it is. We all face that same temptation every day to let other things and other people slowly begin to crowd Jesus out of our lives. I mean, we want to go along with the crowd. We want to enjoy our place in society. We, we don't want to offend anyone or have anybody reject us. So Christ can start to take a back seat in our lives. And the preacher is warning against that here in Hebrews. He knows that we're all capable of it. He says, take care, brothers and sisters, so that none of you may have this evil, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Now, it's easy to think that he's talking about other people here. He must be talking about the really bad people, the really bad sinners out in this world, but he's not. He's talking about us, all of us. We're all capable of turning away from God. Therefore, he warns us here, he says, make sure this doesn't happen. Don't fall away from Christ. Don't slip away from the faith. Don't turn away from the living God. You know, the reality is that we all have the ability to love our sin more than we love Jesus. But that's surely not what God wants for us in our lives. Jesus wants us to go deeper. Jesus wants us to move closer to who God created us to be. And that means leaving sin behind. That means making sure that we're not living with that sinful, unbelieving heart. That means making sure that we're not letting anything else crowd Jesus out of our lives. Because that, that evil, unbelieving heart will lead us to fall away from the living God every single time. I love that phrase, that title for God, the living God. Don't you like that? That's a phrase that, that moves my heart, it moves my spirit, and I hope it does yours as well. Because God is the author of life. God is life himself. And he came to bring us new life as well. It's not something that we look at initially and then say, you know what, I don't want that anymore. 
No, we want to embrace that new life. We want to take it into us and let that new life transform us from the inside out. The preacher says here that the church is to to warn one another. They are to encourage one another. They are to exhort one another every day as long as it's called today. So that means instead of abandoning their faith or letting it fall by the wayside, he's calling them to get closer together, to stay connected, to to push each other, to encourage each other in the faith. Here's something I want you to hear today. Following Jesus is something that we all have to choose individually, but it's not something that we can do by ourselves. That may sound like a contradiction, but it's really not. Being a Christian is something that we all have to decide to do for ourselves, but it's not something that we can live out by ourselves. I want to tell you an example of this. For my first couple of years in ministry, I was out there on my own. I felt like I was doing it all by myself. I didn't really know a lot of people who were my age. I mean, I started preaching when I was 22, so there weren't really a lot of people who were doing that that I knew of. I kind of felt like I was a lone wolf out there, but then... A few years later, I got connected to this group of guys. There's seven of us. We're all in South Georgia. We're all at a a similar stage in life and ministry. And we decided that we were going to do life together. And I can't tell you the difference that that made in my life. I mean, it really did change my life to have these guys around me. Here's a picture of us. We've lost one to Baltimore now, so now we're down to seven. But it has transformed my life to have Ben and Kirk and David and Jim and Anthony and Ted in my life to encourage me and build me up, to slap me down when I'm wrong, to enjoy life with. That picture was taken on my ordination night. I think it was 2016, and they were all there to rally around me and to support me. Now, Christians and the church, we're meant to have that same kind of thing among ourselves, aren't we? I mean, that's supposed to be the norm right there. And I think the church has gone astray if we just think we can be individuals who come to church on Sunday morning and then we leave and never see each other again and we never talk to each other again, we never interact with each other again. No, we were meant for more than that, right? We were meant for this this community and this fellowship, this encouragement and this accountability. And that's something that only happens in relationship with other people. So if we want to have any chance of leaving sin behind, we're going to have to do it together. Can't do it by ourselves. The preacher also uses the language of being uh, active and vigilant in our faith. He talks about today, not just about something that happened a long time ago. It's not about a decision you made a long time ago. It's about today. We're living out our faith today. We're remaining in Christ today. We're striving for holiness today. We don't want to be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. And we know that sin is deceitful, isn't it? Sin always looks attractive. Sin always looks very pretty. It always looks great. But it never turns out that way, does it? It never delivers what it promises. Sin never comes through for us in a good way. There's this story in the Old Testament that the preacher wants us to remember. It goes all the way back to the Exodus story near the front of your Bible. Uh, Way back in the Exodus, the Hebrew people were living as slaves in Egypt under the rule of Pharaoh. And God eventually came to their rescue, leading them out of Egypt, overcoming Pharaoh, and bringing his people through the Red Sea, and leading them to the edge of the Promised Land. But when the people of Israel got to the edge of the Promised Land, they felt it was too dangerous to enter. They didn't think that God would be on their side. They didn't really trust God, and they thought that they would be better off back in Egypt. And it's this very incident that the preacher wants us to remember from Psalm 95. He says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as they did in the rebellion. The rebellion was that time when Israel turned on God outside of the promised land. They didn't trust God. They let their fear get the best of them. They put themselves ahead of God. We've been known to do that from time to time in our own lives. I've been known to do that from time to time in my own life. 
But the call of the preacher here is to avoid that. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Trust in him, believe in him, leave sin behind, and enter into that promised land of new life. You know, I was thinking about it this week. Because of what Jesus has done for us, he he brings us to the edge of that promised land, but he doesn't want us to just enter and stop there. We don't want to get too comfortable with the way that other people are living. We don't want to blend in with the rest of the world. We don't want to do the same things that everybody else is doing. We know that sin is real, that sin is deceptive. We know that it's a power that's still at work all around us. And so the question is, will we choose to go deeper into the life of sin? Or will we choose to go deeper into the life that God has for us? Here's what Jesus wants for us today. He wants us to go deeper and to allow the Holy Spirit to move in our lives and to transform our sinful desires into holy places in our hearts. So let me ask you, uh, what are you struggling with right now? Something in your life that needs to be transformed. What's an area of your life that you know without a doubt does not reflect God or God's intentions for you? If you're like me, there's probably a whole long list of things. So here's my word to you today. Start somewhere. You can't tackle all your problems at one time. But today, if you hear God's voice to leave sin behind, don't harden your heart. Don't do what the Israelites did. If you feel that call to leave sin behind, I beg you today to listen to it. Because that is God calling out to you. That is God speaking out to you. That is God drawing you out of your sin and into the holy life. Guess what? The really good news is. The really good news is that you don't have to do this by yourself. In fact, you couldn't do it by yourself if you wanted to. The good news is that God sends his spirit to live inside of us. God sends his spirit to empower us. God sends his spirit to make us more than we are right now. So I want to invite you to open yourself up to the spirit today. Today, if you hear his voice, open your heart to the power and presence of God in your life. There's an old chorus that goes something like this. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Today, if you hear his voice, And you want to be open to the Spirit of God in your life. Would you say those words with me, that first line on three? One, two, three. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. The rest of the chorus says, melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Leaving sin behind means allowing the Spirit to come and melt everything that doesn't need to be there in our lives. Leaving sin behind means allowing the Spirit to come and mold us into true disciples. Leaving sin behind means being emptied of sin and being filled with God's Spirit and God's love. Leaving sin behind means opening ourselves up to being used by God. That song is the prayer of my life this morning. I want it to be your prayer as well. Because I truly believe that leaving sin behind will lead us deeper into the life of God. And I desperately want that for every single one of you who are in this room, those who are watching online. May none of us drift away. May none of us fall away. May none of us continue with an evil, unbelieving heart. May we strive to go deeper with God's power inside of us. Let's leave sin behind and strive for holy living. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Almighty God, we are so grateful for this Pentecost Sunday, the day when we celebrate the power of your Holy Spirit. 
and the coming of your Holy Spirit into our lives. Would you fill us anew today that we might have the strength to turn our backs on sin, to put sin in the rearview mirror so that we can head into a new direction, following after you, becoming the people that you want us to be, becoming who we were made to be in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.